April 6th, 2012. From the stylish high-tech underground studios of Ribbit Media in Warwick, Rhode Island, this is News Undies. <laughs> For April 6th, 2012, this is News Undies, all the news that shouldn't be news. I'm Paul Torville with these headlines. ABC News does a series of stories on a beef filler, which the beef industry calls lean, finely textured beef, or lean, boneless beef trimmings. ABC News calls it pink slime, and the entire nation's beef consumers soil themselves. A new search is underway for missing and presumed dead pioneering female aviator Amelia Earhart. No one has yet heard from her since July 2nd, 1937. I'm guessing this time will yield fantastic new insights. Also, I think Twilight is deep and the Chupacabra is real. Movie director James Cameron visited the bottom of the bottom of the bottom of the ocean. Or close enough. He didn't pull off the deepest manned dive. That still belongs to Trieste. But at least Cameron brought a camera. Someone threw flour on Kim Kardashian as she was having her ego inflated. I'm sorry, that's all the information I have at this time. Safeway supermarkets have announced that they have stopped selling beef with the notorious pink slime filler. I don't recall them mentioning starting selling beef with the notorious pink slime filler. Dick Cheney finally got a heart transplant. Thank goodness. <laughs> I don't know what I would have done if he had just died a normal, natural death for someone of his age and health. Thank goodness for modern medicine, we'll have Dick Cheney to kick around a little more. The situation is in rehab. Good for him. I still don't care. CNN reports, ex-porn star allowed to teach kids. Eek! This has to stop. I hope they're allowing ex-soldiers to teach kids because killing is much better than screwing. Beef Products Incorporated, the principal manufacturer of the so-called pink slime, has begun using the slogan, Beef is beef. Perhaps, but thanks to you, it ain't necessarily meat. Hey gang, it's time for Celebrity Birthdays once again. I got my cake hat on. Let's rock. For Saturday the 24th, Steve McQueen, dead, and David Suzuki. For Saturday the 25th, Ed Begley, dead, and Anita Bryant. For Monday the 26th, Joseph Campbell, dead, and Leonard Nimoy. For Tuesday the 27th, Cyrus Vance, dead, and Stacey Ann Ferguson, or Fergie. For Wednesday the 28th, Vince Vaughn and Nick Frost. For Thursday the 29th, Paul Crouch, ew, and Billy Carter, dead. For Friday the 30th, Astrid Gilberto and Nora Jones. For Saturday the 31st, Barney Frank and Patrick Leahy. For Sunday the 1st, Gordon Jump, dead, and Susan Boyle. For Monday the 2nd, Buddy Ebsen, dead, and Sir Alec Guinness, dead. For Tuesday the 3rd, Ray Combs, dead, and Eddie Murphy. For Wednesday the 4th, David Cross and Robert Downey Jr. For Thursday the 5th, Cole Powell and Max Gale. For Friday the 6th, John Ratzenberger and Mary Lou Hatter. That's Celebrity Birthdays. I'm Paul Torville and I'm done. Coming up after the break, Sarah Palin, CNN Missing the Point and prop comedy on the road to the White House. For your upcoming wedding, bat mitzvah, or funeral, trust the professionals at Blas Florist to create the perfect mood-appropriate arrangement. Your special occasion will be so much more special with a Blas Florist arrangement. Blas will help your memories be that much more memorable. Call or click today to order your unique and not at all sexually suggestive arrangement from Blas Florist. Blas. The florist you shouldn't fear. Sarah Palin. So, Burger King hired Mary J. Blige to do a commercial for their chicken snack wraps, whatever the hell they are. They paid her $2 million to do it. The ads ran for a little while, and Burger King pulled the ads. Was the ad incomplete? Was the ad agency incompetent? Is Burger King racist? Is Mary J. Blige racist? Is the ad agency racist? Did the check bounce? Who can say? 
But the amount of verbal diarrhea spraying all over the everywhere over this is completely insane. Someone somewhere mentioned the old black people eat chicken stereotype, and it was like a swarm of locusts all of a sudden. Locusts with diarrhea! CNN wasted nearly four minutes of valuable airtime chatting with a branding and social media wonk about how the news media and people in general are making a big to-do about nothing. Naturally, I just couldn't let that go. Senior Mitt Romney campaign aide Eric Fernstrom characterized the transition from fighting for the nomination of your party to actually campaigning for the office as being a bit like an etch-a-sketch. At that moment, every camp that was even minimally anti-Romney flipped into maximum diarrhea mode. Rick Santorum, or his handlers, made sure that Rick's next speaking engagement, he was holding an etch-a-sketch. Not to be outdone, Newt Gingrich had his photo ops with the timeless toy. As for Ron Paul, well, there's no strong evidence that there is room in his conservatively authoritarian libertarianism for that kind of frivolity. So is this it, folks? Has conservative politics in America been reduced to bad prop comedy? Are we nearing a time when Carrot Top might be an actually viable GOP candidate? Here are Pig and Sheep with their thoughts. Let's hope so. I love prop comedy. We could use some of that in the White House. That and baby Jesus. Amen. Woo. While props can be useful in communicating with people who don't speak your language, uh, well, now that I think about it, screw it. Carrot Top 2016. That's what Pig and Sheep think. What are your thoughts? Email them to ovcomments at newsundies.com. If your pastor told you to stand up, would you stand up? If your pastor told you to help the poor, would you help the poor? If your pastor told you to get a religiously themed tattoo for Lent, would you do that? RT hipster pastor Chris C. of the Ecclesia Church near Houston, Texas, has asked his flock to do just that, and more than a few are going along for the ride. Fifty, as a matter of fact. As a person with more than a few tattoos myself, I can attest to the appeal of tattoos. Well, good tattoos done well. But I'm not honor-bound to obey the Bible, because I'm in no way a Christian or a Catholic or a Jew. But... These folks seem to have forgotten Leviticus 19.28. Or they're cherry-picking. Anyway, it sounds to me like old Pastor Chris was just looking for an excuse to get a tattoo. And didn't want to be the only one out there. Don't go away. Coming up after the break, the Octomom, Atheism 2.0, and Titanic's sister ship finally sinks. Soot. You've been hearing a lot of not-so-nice things about soot. Mostly from tree-hugging, dirt-worshipping pansy liberals and people who think breathing is important. They will talk the ears off your head, droning on and on about wind and solar and renewable energy. What they don't tell you is that soot built America. Our modern post-industrial society owes everything to soot. If it wasn't for coal-fired power and diesel-powered transportation, America would grind to a halt. That's a fact. And as long as we have anything to say about it, and as long as there's profit to be made in government subsidies on soot, we're going to do everything we can to keep it that way. We're America's soot industry. Profitable, ugly, traditional, American. The Octomom. And now, here's Ryan Hanley with another Jeff Goldblum fact. You know Jeff Goldblum. Jeff Goldblum once took a trip to Alaska on a boat with 400 people. The Alaskan News covered the event. The headline read, 
Goldblum arrives with 399 pricks. A little unfortunate if you think about it. Or perhaps it is every woman's dream come true. Back to you. Thanks, Ryan. Fascinating. And now, here's Moose Weintraub with a Sports Half Minute. Moose Weintraub Sports Half Minute It's a whole half minute of sports 30 seconds of sports Moose Weintraub Sports Half Minute This is your Sports Half Minute. I'm Moose Weintraub. Tim Tebow is now a New York Jet. Reports say that he is excited. So am I. Reportedly. Thanks, Moose. Always a great report from Moose. Alain de Botton. A guy I'm guessing got beat up a lot in elementary school is proposing that an atheist temple be built in London, England. De Botton, who professes to be an atheist himself, still sees so much value in certain aspects of religion, such as ritual and community, that he thinks, rather than just bulldozing the whole mess and starting with a green field, we should start with the unibody of a Corvair convertible and just start building it up with parts from a dozen other failed experiments, but leave out the bits we find aesthetically unpleasant. And he proposes keeping the ritual and community aspects of so-called great religions, but jettisoning the god bits and just maybe the other supernatural claims. This he calls Atheism 2.0. De Botton's Atheism 2.0 concept, which is the underpinning of his new book, Religion for Atheists, Non-Believer's Guide to the Uses of Religion, has been met with reactions ranging from a Spock brow to downright condemnation among vocal atheists. There are, uh, there are already plenty of non-religious clubs out there. Church of the Flying Spaghetti Monster, Church of the Subgenius, Unitarian Universalists, the Church of No Thanks, Buddhism, and many more. All offer refuge to atheists who like that sort of thing. The last thing atheists need, Mr. de Botton, is another reason for religious people to look at us and mistakenly say, Atheism is a religion, just like my religion. No, my theist friends, it is so not. And finally, and I do mean finally, we all saw this coming, didn't we? Encyclopedia Britannica stops printing its iconic leather-bound volumes. The announcement was made by way of a press release on its website, whose URL can be found on Wikipedia or Google. The press release mentions many of the innovations the company has made while being digital, mobile, and social. Well, good for them. Well, that's all for this edition of News Undies. If you see news that shouldn't be news, you can submit your story tips online at newsundies.com. News Undies is a bi-weekly show, and we'll be back on Friday, April 13th with fresh undies. Thanks for watching. Until next time, I'm Paul Torville. After that, I might be working on a way to do away with this. So much for prop comedy, now it's on to puppets.